Welcome to uh, Visby, which is a beautiful medieval town on the island of Gotland in the Baltic Sea. It belongs to Sweden. Uh, it's normally quite a sleepy place. People come here on holiday, but as you can probably tell, it's not sleepy at the moment. In fact, uh, the entire Swedish elite have descended on this uh, small town uh, for a, a political festival called Almedal. And the idea is that anyone can come down here, the public, ministers, they brush shoulders, they discuss ideas. It's a completely open forum. And just to give you an example of how open that forum is, I walked past a, a stand, a rally the other day on the corner. They, they appear on every corner it seems uh, and it was run by the feminist initiative and their slogan is replace racists with feminists when i came back through the square uh, their position had been taken by a right-wing group who are advocating for the repatriation of all immigrants in sweden so extreme views uh, perhaps but swedish politics has always been dominated by the center ground so there's the moderates who are on the right slightly, centre-right, and then you have the Social Democrats on the left. They haven't cooperated much in the past, but they're increasingly doing so. And that's because of uh, an underbelly, an undercurrent really, going on in Swedish politics. And it's the same one that swept through much of Europe. And that's the rise of popularism. And they're struggling really to deal with that here, particularly Almedalen, where the debate has traditionally been so open. Uh, you've got a situation where one of the parties has grown and grown and grown. They're called the Swedish Democrats, and now they are rivaling the two centre-ground parties. The centre-ground parties are refusing, however, to cooperate in any way with the uh, populists. And that has created two separate conversations within Swedish politics and Swedish society. So rather than one big political conversation, which Almedalen used to be known for, there's lots of separate conversations taking place. Uh, I was speaking to the Swedish Defence Minister just earlier this week and he suggested that there's a lot of divisiveness, he accepted that within Swedish politics, but he can't deal with the populists, he doesn't believe they should be given any credibility. But at the same time, there are those that are listening to that conversation and uh, that movement is growing. Uh, with that divide in conversations, you have those who are trying to exploit that divide and the suggestion that Russia, perhaps, Russian trolls are getting involved in the debate, exacerbating uh, that divide with fake news, for example. Uh, that's certainly the view of the Defence Minister. He said that to me, but I followed up with the Russian ambassador to Stockholm and he said there's no evidence of that whatsoever. It's a false accusation. But the reality is, where there was one big political conversation in Sweden, now there are two. And the key players within mainstream politics have lost a bit of clout as a result of that. And that's because your clout comes from the scale of the conversation that you're involved in. So if you're not reaching as many people, you're not going to have as much clout. And that's really what's happened with political parties across the liberal world, really, as populism increases. They've divided the political debate. Uh, some would argue that that works in Russia's favour. Some would argue that that's a, a false accusation. But certainly it's true that there's more divisiveness in European politics and US politics, you could argue as well, certainly across the liberal world. And that's because this uh, political debate is becoming much more fractious and it's splitting apart. And that's changing the level of clout that politicians are having. Goodbye from Visby, I found a quiet alleyway at the back as I walked through.